Uh, Catherine, so you're there at, at this vigil. Can you, can you give us an update? Yeah, so the vigil began at about three o'clock this afternoon. We had a moment's silence. We've had prayers, we've had songs. It's been really very moving indeed. And I spoke just a little bit earlier to a... They managed to flee, they managed to get to Britain. They are now effectively refugees. They're understandably completely traumatised. Let's hear a little bit of their story. Yes, uh, at around uh, quarter past six in the morning, my son woke me up, go to the shelter. Uh, there are bombs, they're bombing us. We went into the shelter. Uh, uh, we closed ourselves with our dog inside, frightening. We are used to it, but suddenly we heard that uh, terrorists uh, entered Israel, our uh, area. Uh, we closed the door, of course, of the shelter. Uh, there wasn't any way to really close the place from inside so uh, uh, of course we try to find a way to be safe inside and the terrorists will not be able to go into the shelter we were horrified we were all shaking uh, my dog uh, uh, was shaking as well we were, we've been inside for around six or seven hours I don't remember uh, I decided uh, we can't stay any longer in this place. Um, the military gave us a window of escape at around two o'clock afternoon. We arranged really few things. Uh, we went with the army through the fields in the background of the kibbutz. Um, we escaped for a few hours to the center of Israel and then we got a flight to Rhodes, one way of course. We stayed 12 hours in, on Rhodes until we find a flight to come to be with my brother in London. Uh, we're exhausted. We're exhausted. We're heartbreak. Uh, obviously we don't know when we're going to be able to go back home. Um, I held the door with my bare hands uh, and one, one hand I had a knife to prevent terrorists from going in, to try and do whatever I can. Um, with all of our luck, we didn't have any terrorists enter our house. Um, it was just hard to witness people dying and hearing about some madness things that are going on to see what happens to my country. So an understandably traumatised family. The father was here too. He felt not up to speaking on camera. The, the mother, Sigal, told me that 30 of her friends had been killed and yet she hasn't cried. I suppose they're still in shock. And of course, they consider themselves to be some of the lucky ones, really, because of course we know that 1,000... 200 Israelis were murdered on that Saturday and there's another 120 taken hostage believed to be in Gaza ranging from nine-month-old babies to little four-year-old red-headed boys to old ladies and whole families and interestingly talking to this family they were saying they bear no ill will to the people of Gaza. They said to me that in their view, Hamas has kidnapped the people of Gaza. They know that the people of Gaza do not want this, just as Israeli people do not want death, do not want conflict. But they do say that Hamas, that terrorist group, does need to be removed from Gaza.